This is Black Cat Crafts. Our video today focuses on easy poisonous plants. So this is episode one of four. So there's a total of four plants in this collection. As usual, this video is designed for people who are new. So if you haven't painted a bunch of minis, you don't have a shelf full of brushes, a room full of paints, this is designed for you. So please don't eviscerate me in the comments if you're a highly experienced painter and find this extremely basic. That's the goal. At Black Cat Crafts, we focus on Halloween village personalizations, dioramas, and in general, just awesome things to add to your village, like this plant. So that's our goal today, is the poisonous plant that's purple with the pink spots. And we'll go through step-by-step step the planning phase and how we got here. So first, you'll need the supplies. This is a set of four 3D printed minis that I got off of Amazon. I also used a basic set of acrylic paints, brushes, and of course, some water. So for step one, I mentioned planning and that's what we start with. I took a picture of my mini and then used a pen tablet to do some different colors and I settled on this design. And I did that because, as you'll see in the, the next part of my video, I really wanted to think differently about my overall layout. You see, my diorama really focuses on three colors. I've got dark brown for dirt, green, toxic grass, as well as man-eating plants, and then a lot of pumpkin orange. So I, I wondered if I should make these plants similar colors, and I thought, no, 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 they would, they would blend into the background. And I, I didn't want that. I wanted these to really stick out because they are so fun and amazing and just totally different from what you see in the average Halloween village. So that got me thinking some more. Okay, well, my colors need to be bright because in my Halloween village, I don't have a lot of old, dirty, everything is vibrant and new, almost like it's the result of glowing toxic waste or really unethical genetic recombination. So. Um, those were my, my guardrails. I wanted something bright, I wanted something different colors, and, and I needed it to really stick out and be visible. The colors I chose really pop against that man-eating daffodil and against the Audrey II type plants in the nursery. So it, it really looks great. It was perfect for my design. So now that we've got a plan, let's work on the 3D Mini itself. So as you can see, this one was kind of a rough print. It was very, very textured. So what I did was I did some coats of inexpensive black paint. Now instead of black, a lot of people choose to use gray for a primer paint, and I would recommend that. I ended up having to do some different things to my other paint colors to make them really pop against the dark background. So you'll see that throughout the video is me making some artistic choices based on the black of the primer color. So once I got that paint all in the grooves and I was happy with the way that it looked, it was time to start with the color. Now I'm using an old brush here uh, and I'm really pushing the paint into the mini. You don't see this on a typical miniature if you've watched any of my other videos where I'm doing repaints. I'm definitely not using a crappy brush like that and I'm not shoving the paint everywhere. This is because this mini still has a little bit of texture and I really want to shove this base color coat into those, those ripples, those ribs. I'm also kind of slapping it on everywhere because it's going to be a base coat and this thing has such a, a strong texture. You know, using a small brush or using one that's really nice, um, yes, you could do it, but this, is, this works great for this purpose. Now, this particular paint is not just any lavender. It is a purple I mixed with white, and that's because white has a titanium oxide in it in this paint and it and it really uh, fights the black normally if you put an acrylic paint over something like that like the black that you see here it will look darker um, when it dries so it might go on nice and vibrant but then after it's on there it's gonna just darken and darken and darken as it dries and you'll find yourself doing multiple coats so definitely 
add in that white if you're like me and are using black for your primer coat. Now I started with the top and the top is going to be the lightest. So that particular one had the most white in the purple. Now I'm moving down to a slightly darker purple and don't worry, I'm not gonna leave it like that, that line that you see. I'm not going for that, you know, sandwich cake ombre look. I am at this point going back in and I'm blending the two colors together. So you'll see me use this color of purple, a total of three colors of purple on this particular coat. Again, this is a base color coat, so don't worry about perfection. I'm going for rough areas. Where is it medium darker? Where is it the lightest? Where is it the darkest? And I'm adding that color in in a very broad, quick way. After all, this is supposed to be an easy mini paint. Uh, we're looking to do this fast. Of course, you'll need to let the paint dry between, so fast in air quotes. But, um, you know, some other YouTubers out there really get into some wonderful specifics. And if you're beyond the level that this video shows, I definitely recommend checking them out. They've got just a lot of great tips and tricks, um, ones that, you know what, are not a focus for my particular channel. So definitely, like I said, go check them out. So we'll continue with this mini. I'm going to start to move down the piece itself, getting into successively darker and darker colors as we get near the bottom. I'm also using that darker color in between the two plants itself because that is an area where you'd see more shade. So think about where your lighting is coming from as you're applying the the darkest colors and the lightest colors and i'm not talking about the lighting in the ambient area you know for example where i painted this where it's primarily coming from an overhead fixture i'm thinking about the lighting where my halloween village is where the lighting is actually primarily coming from the building that will be directly behind this plant so you know i, I like to have flexibility in where i put my pieces so i i while I mentioned that the lighting will come from behind, um, I do like to do some shading from top to bottom just to give myself the greatest flexibility. My dioramas are not set. Um, once I set them up, I like to move pieces around and this particular paint style where I'm going from lightest at the top to darkest at the bottom tends to agree with everything that I do. So if you're not the type who likes to move your stuff around, I'd, I'd also recommend doing something like this. It's a little bit more neutral and can fit with many configurations and do so in a seamless way.
now that we have our base coat done, let's move to step four. Step four looks to amplify that base color coat with some highlights and shadows. So just like in the beginning, I'm using a light lavender, so a little darker purple mixed with white, and putting it on the areas where I've identified that the sun or light would be coming. So putting it on top there. Now, I did put it on a little heavy on the right, and I am going to wipe that away. I don't want to glob on too much paint at this step because it will leave texture on this piece that wasn't in the original 3D print, at least texture that I want to keep. Not that the ripples I want to get rid of, but everything else I, I would like to keep. So I will go and, and very careful, carefully pad away that excess paint as we go on. So this part I'm continuing to add the lightest color wherever the piece of the miniature sticks out further and would have light from above on it. If you're uncertain about where to put these highlights, try the flashlight trick where you put a flashlight where your light source is and then look down right next to the flashlight to see from top down in this case where the light hits the brightest and that is where you'd want to put your highlights. So that's one trick, there are many others out there.
Now that we're done with the paint, let's move on to step five. Now that we have the base color like we like it, let's go ahead and paint the bumps. So if you remember back to the original plan, the base plant itself was purple, but the bumps are more of a magenta pink. Now I'm not doing magenta here. I am doing the highlights, which need to be a, a much lighter pink. So we'll go over this with magenta later, but because the paint has water in it, the lighter paint will show through and I'm leaving the areas that I want darker already that purple color because it is going to be darker and it will build in the, some nice shading and nice gradient for you. As you recall, this is all about easy. So some other channels that have more advanced techniques for model painting aren't going to do it this way, but this show is all about how do we make this simple? How do we make this accessible for somebody new? I view it as almost like the gateway into, into model painting minis. So um, this is a technique that works for me and I hope it works really well for you too. So continue painting your mini's spots until you're in a more or less complete state. Now from here, we'll go ahead and make them the pink color that we had in our original design. So this pink is about three quarters acrylic paint, one quarter water. And that's done on purpose. I want the pigment to be a very saturated color, but I also want it to have a good deal of that nice surface tension that you see on, on beads of water. And what that'll do is it will evenly coat our bumps and allow us to have a good deal of control when using a brush on something so small. Uh, again, you know, advanced model builders will have different techniques. And, and we totally respect that, but this is a way to break it down to make it accessible for, for people who, you know, maybe they have shaky hands like me or not a lot of time, a lot of things pulling you different ways. You simply don't have time to spend 10 hours painting a model. Um, this is one way to make this whole process quicker and still get a satisfactory result. Now, this is coat number one. So as this dries, it's not going to dry perfectly. You're going to see areas where there's a bit of a line because again, we did add some water to this paint. So you will see, you know, a little bit of lines coming through. Maybe we didn't get the paint exactly where we wanted. And that's fine because we've done that at every step in this process. We did multiple layers for the plant itself. We'll paint the base again, as you could see there, you know, it's just a, a quick green. So. Every step we do is just a nice way to get the model one step closer to being finished in a way that is simple and successful for people who don't have an art degree, who can't focus hours and hours and hours on their minis, but want to get something that displays beautifully for 
your Halloween village, or whatever you're using your minis for. Continue to do multiple coats of pink until you've got a nice smooth finish and you've got the paint full coverage exactly where you want it on those dots. So I won't show the final coat because I think you get the idea, but we'll go ahead and move on to the final step, which is to finish the platform. So as I mentioned earlier, the platform had a base coat of green on it, and now I'm going to go back and add in additional green. I'm using a, the darkest green 
up close and underneath the plant to add shade and depth. Oops, I made a little mistake there. I'm going to go back and get that with a, a wet brush to get rid of it. And then continuing around, I'll do the same thing around the entire piece. While the paint is still wet, I want to work a little bit on the, the rest of the piece, including the front. So I'll finish this section and then go ahead and grab some lighter green to highlight areas that aren't in a shaded area like under the plant. So at this stage I'm adding a slightly lighter shade of green. I will go back and wet blend or mix the two paint colors together right on the piece in just a minute. But first I'm applying the paint. Again, this has a very textured surface so you see me kind of using a stabbing motion. That's because it's the only way we're going to get this paint to cover those ridges from the 3D printing process evenly. So here I'm going back and I'm adding in a little bit of that dark green, just to some spots that I missed. Oops, I made a mistake. I got a little green on the piece. Let's go ahead and wipe that up. I'm using a clean brush that is wet and I'm just dabbing the paint off. Easy fix. Now I'm just finishing up adding some green in the lower part and then we'll go ahead and add more green highlight paint and as you can see I'm using a swirling motion. So this use quite heavy paint on, on all the areas there and I'm swirling and dabbing it to mix. Now I do want to keep the areas light and dark and, and sometimes I'll have a pretty sharp gradient while others I'll, I'll definitely blend it more like I'm doing there to make it more of a smooth look. If you look at grass, especially large swaths of it, you'll see a gentle gradient at times and at times a very stark contrast, especially around areas that are heavily shaded. So I'm using it again, the dabbing motion because we do have a texture and um, just using that as a way to, to blend the paint. So I'm not aggressively swirling it as you might on a palette. Um, that's on purpose because I want to really make the, the highest parts of this piece pop and then retain the dark colored paint in the lower parts because it does have quite a bit of its own texture. So we're amplifying what's already there and then, you know, also amplifying the shadows as well that wouldn't naturally show unless we had maybe a bright flashlight or other bright light directly above the piece. It gives it a lot more drama um, and, and relatively easy too in, in a very short time. Once you have the base like you like it, you need to just let your piece dry and then you can display. I've got it here in front of Hemlock's Nursery. A couple different views just to give you a feel for the size of it. That's next to the witch holding pumpkins that I repainted in a previous episode. So this is Black Cat Crafts. If you liked what you saw today, I hope you subscribe. Check out my other videos. I do war game platforms, the perfect for dioramas. Uh, of course, train sets could use this stuff too, and a lot of personalization and a few dupes. So come back and check out all of that stuff, plus some of the reviews. Thanks for stopping by.